Hello everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another Cars 3 Diecast review. Today, here we have yet another Demolition Derby contender, and his name is Broadside. Alright, let's get right into the video, starting with where I got this awesome diecast from. As I'm sure you guys know by now, I got it from Amaze and Boys Toys Co. Their eBay store link is in the description below. It's called Code May Zero. They have a bunch of stuff listed, but they have even more stuff that's not. So if you have something that you want to buy, just email them the email address for them is in the description as well so just contact them maybe for example it's Ido San from 2010 yeah just email them and you might be in luck you also might be in luck if you want to sell something that you just have laying around in your closet collecting dust just shoot them an email with the details and it could be loose, it could be damaged in the package, whatever, just let them know. You might be able to sell it to them, so that would be awesome. And they're also in the process of changing everything over to that company name, including their eBay store, and they're going to have their own website coming very soon, so yeah, lots of awesome stuff will be happening. And they do ship worldwide, so Australia, perfect. Canada, awesome. Europe, even better, you know, whatever. Anything works wherever you live. So, obviously, Broadside won the poll on my last Cars 3 diecast review, which was of T-Bone. He is a very cool Demolition Derby contender. He's actually one of my favorites. And for some reason, Broadside won, even though on my review of Roscoe. If you go to my video on this guy and check out the poll results, you see that T-Bone clearly wins, like the majority, like 77%, so that's cool. But in second place is APB. Broadside was like in last or second to last. However, somehow he won the poll on my review of T-Bone. So, unless you guys just changed your mind, I have really no idea how this happened. My guess is that you just voted for whoever was at the top of the poll list. I don't really get it, but I think that's probably the reason why that happened. Like, whoever's at the top of the list, you just kind of click. So, Whatever broadside one we're going to review him. He's personally my least favorite demolition derby contender so far just because he looks kind of boring to me but maybe I'll change my mind after we get him out. Anyway, for my next Cars 3 diecast review, the options are APB. We'll put him at the top of the list with the benefit of the doubt because pretty sure he'll win. Probably should have won last time, I guess. Second option is Fishtail, and third option, which is the last option, is Jimbo here. So this would be an unboxing, whereas the other two would just be a loose reviews. So I'm really looking forward to all of these, so I really do not have any preference over which one wins. So Broadside here is in Case H for Cars 3 Singles, one of the best cases since the debut of Cars 3 Cars on May 1st. The entire list of contents is in the description below. I mean, check it out. You have Pushover, Darren Levitt, Jimbo, Ernie Gearson, Roscoe, Fishtail, and APB. They're all new cars in this case, so it's absolutely insane. The description reads, Blindside by a new generation of pissing cut racers, Lightning McQueen finds himself suddenly pushed out of the sport he loves. To get back on top, he will need the help of a young race technician, aka Cruz Ramirez, inspiration from the late fabulous Hudson Hornet, aka Doc, and guidance from a few old friends along the way, like Smokey, I guess, and Mather would fall into that category as well. So you have the typical packaging, and I'll be right back with this guy all opened up. He does not look happy. He looks depressed. <laughs> So here is Broadside out of the package, looking pretty decent. I can't say amazing because like I said earlier, he's definitely my least favorite Demolition Derby contender so far. He just doesn't have anything unique or interesting or special about him. Whereas all the other Demolition Derby contenders, they have this unique gimmick that makes them very special and you know just awesome and appealing to me at least this is all my opinion so of course apb is a police car that's pretty cool and then you have t-bone he's bent that's awesome 
and he had that feature in the movie. Sigler, Patriot colors, red, white, and blue. That's his gimmick. That's what makes him special. Taco, he's bent like a taco. I mean, that's his thing. That is the thing about him that I like. But if I look here at Broadside, he's blue, pickup truck. Can't really say anything else about him, right guys? I mean, at least you can agree with me with that. Unless I'm missing something. Usually their names relate to that as well. Like their gimmick broadside simply means to like, I talked about this in my crash video because when I was involved in that crash, I broadsided. I didn't say I, I shouldn't say I. My taxi cab driver broadsided a white Mercedes. So what it means exactly is to hit a car like that. Broadside here is broadsiding Lightning McQueen. That's like what the definition is, essentially. Now maybe if in the movie we saw broadside the character broadsiding a bunch of other demolition derby cars, that'd be pretty sweet. It makes sense. But that leads me into his appearance, which... I don't even remember him from the movie. When I saw this guy, I thought it was the announcer because the announcer for the Demolition Derby is a blue pickup truck as well. But that's not the case. You can easily tell by like the side here. On the side of the announcer, it says like Thunder Hollow Speedway. It has like decals like this and this because Roscoe is a staff member as well. And obviously he has the number here, 25. So appearance, kind of a big question mark. But obviously when the movie comes out, on DVD and whatnot, we'll be able to slow everything down, take pictures, and then I'll show you guys like, here's where Broadside appeared specifically, but Demolition Derby crazy or whatever, that was where he appeared. He obviously like works there or whatever, works for money as a participant. His release single so far in this case, Case H, that's pretty much it so far, although I would not be surprised if in, you know, a while, maybe a year or so, he got another release, two-pack, multi-pack, something along those lines. I think he will most likely. So let's get on to the review now of him. He has this nice satin matte paint job, which is what all the Demolition Derby contenders have now after Taco and Sigler. Because as you can see here on Taco, the light shines off of him. On broadside, that's not the case due to the finish of the paint. So they're doing that now with all of them, like T-Bone and Pushover. They all have like satin matte paint finishes, which I think makes sense because obviously they're dirty, they're beat up. It wouldn't make sense that they're glossy, you know, a glossy finish. The expression is pretty, like I said, the pressing. I mean, he actually looks a little bit more concentrated now that I see the teeth and the mouth. You can see his three lone teeth in there. He just looks kind of like he's growling almost. Just very kind of concentrated, I guess. Not as sad because if you don't look at the mouth, then it kind of looks sad because he's like squinting his eyes and whatnot. It just looks very low. But anyway, taking a look here at the grill, you can see it's kind of like painted on almost because it seems like you lost it. You can see like the black paint there. He lost his headlights there. Now these gray things are a rubbery plastic, but don't like try and tear them off or anything. They could break off. I could definitely see that happening, but they are exhaust headers. They help Broadside get more of an exhaust flow because he's racing around and they provide for that extra flow of like combustion exhaust. So, you know, everything runs better, at least according to Wikipedia. On his hood there, nothing special. You can just see some scratches of white there and then the blue background. On this side here, number is 25. It's in black with white trim. Then you have this white stripe going across him, which is just pretty generic in my opinion. Here's the base if you're interested. Now while looking at the base here, you can see that the front tires are just normal and smooth. The back ones are treaded, which is very nice to see. They do that on some of the Demolition Derby contenders like a taco, for example, or fishtail, but not all of them. For example, APB, they're all smooth like that. And same thing with a taco. So it's nice to get some treads here on some of them. Now looking at the rims themselves, you can see they're white and then they have like some blue and white paints around them, very sloppily. The windows there, they're caged up with that like chain mail there, kind of like a cage, like I said. That is on both sides. And it's kind of like that for the back there as well, but they're like bigger bars that cover up the window. So pretty cool. And then the bed here is also covered up with three separate bars or whatever they are that are painted blue with some black stripes on them. 
he apparently doesn't want anything to get in there, so he just blocked it up. It's kind of cool, but again, nothing really too special, or I don't really see a reasoning why. Now, this is probably the best thing about him. On the back here, again, no taillights, nothing really, but in the white light area right there, black text, it says, flip me over upside down. So if you're looking at this, like driving behind them, like you realize it's flip me over, because like you're reading upside down, but when he's actually flipped over, it reads correctly. So that's kind of cool, but it's just not really his gimmick. I don't really see how it relates to broadside unless he's saying like, if you broadside me, you might flip me over and then you'll be able to read that, you know, straight or whatever. I don't know, I really don't know. And that's, like I said, why broadside just doesn't really appeal to me. He's just kind of boring, especially when you compare him to all the other demolition derby contenders, like these ones right here. Let me just move the camera a little bit there. They're just so amazing and broadside does not live up to their standards. Of course though, this is not Mattel's fault. It is Disney and Pixar because Mattel goes off of what Disney and Pixar create originally. Now unless in the movie when I finally find this guy, there's something about him, there's something on him that Mattel just did not do. And of course they've done that before. They've kind of, I don't know, neglected some features of cars in the past, but I do have to say, I think this one falls on Disney and Pixar. They're just creating all these awesome Demolition Derby contenders. They have all these ideas, police car, taco, patriotic one, big RV ambulance, stuff like that. And then they just got to like the point where we need just a couple more. And I mean, maybe it's that, like maybe it makes sense because it's not like in real life, all of them would be gimmicky and have like something special about them. But whatever, that's just my opinion on the matter. And I don't even have any comparisons to do for this guy because you know, there's just not many other cars to compare him to. Here's Hank Halsum, another blue pickup truck, but obviously though, he's a little bit more curved because he's a newer model, whereas Broadside's definitely a little bit of an older model of pickup truck. And he's like clean and not dented and smashed and everything like that. So just a little comparison here. I feel like out of all the cars, he would be the most similar to Broadside, but still not very similar at all. And I also have another blue pickup truck, which is the Dynaco Crew Chief here. They are the same model, like Hank and the Crew Chief. They're the same model, essentially, but you know, I still want to compare them. Broadside and the Chief, that is. The blues are definitely more different, though, than Broadside and Hank. And lastly, probably the, I don't even know why I pulled this guy out, Paul Oakley. I just thought, I don't know, I really don't know what I was thinking with this guy. Don't even know. I don't have any reasoning, but we'll do a 360 anyway. I really do like Paul. Paul's an awesome car, without a doubt. So, yeah, that is all for my review of Broadside. I still am happy to have him in my collection. Definitely a great ad. He'll definitely, like, help fill in my Demolition Derby display when I get that going. And hopefully that gets going soon. I plan on unboxing and reviewing the Crazy 8 playset, which is, like, the big ring and everything. Not the, like, figure 8 one. It's just, like, the ring with the fence and everything and the mist for their billboard and whatnot. So that'll be a cool video. Then I'll probably put that on the table like over that way where Lizzie's is and then it'll be a cool setup. So that's the plan at least. And I'll throw some Demolition Derby cars in there. So let me know out of these cars that I will be putting on the screen right now, which one is your favorite? I'm sure some of you guys might pick Broadside, but I feel like I don't know, I feel like most of you actually won't, even though you won the poll over Fishtail, APB, and Jimbo, but I won't be including them in this little question. It's just the ones I've reviewed so far. We got the whole gang going on in here right now, besides the ones that I haven't reviewed yet. These are all the ones that I have review was this like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen demolition derby related cars that's pretty insane that's a lot and we have three more to go until mattel releases more which will be like next month and i just want to touch on this real quickly right now i'm kind of i don't know i don't want to say burnt out with cars 3 diecast but everything is either a piston cup racer or a demolition derby contender at the moment 
and it does get a little dry even though all of them are pretty awesome for the most part but it just gets a little repetitive because you have like Lane Lock oh yeah he's cool then you have Darren Left but yeah he's cool too they're both green I guess then you have Ernie Gearson oh yeah that's cool next up we have Phil Tankson Nitroid oh yeah nice and then same thing with the Demolition Derby contenders it's like everything is pretty much very related and similar so that's why I'm really looking forward to the legends like Junior Moon, Louise Barnstormer Nash and River Scott those will be awesome a nice change of pace same with Maddie McGear the Fang, Chris Revstoppy was the other one what's his name there's like Pat Traxon isn't that like the pace car so a couple other cars that aren't racers or demolition derby contenders now don't get me wrong I still love them but yeah, I'm definitely looking for a little bit more of a variety coming soon. So thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks, Bailey Mays over at Amazing Boys Toys Co. I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye now.